The next item of business is consideration of business motion 7734 in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out changes to this week's business. And I call on George Adam to move the motion. Thank you, President Officer, and moved. Thank you, Minister. I call on Russell Finlay to speak to and move Amendment 7734.1. Thank you, President Officer. I begin by expressing my disappointment at Nicola Sturgeon's uh, refusal to be here today. She presided over gender self-ID in Scotland's prisons. She invalidated women's concerns about single-sex spaces being compromised. She created the obscene situation in which a double rapist was sent inside a woman's prison. She should be here to answer questions about this mess, which is entirely of her own making. Nicola Sturgeon has now called some opponents transphobes, homophobes, misogynists and even racists. Presiding officer, we all know what her game is. This smear is a despicable attempt to divert attention from a double rapist in a woman's prison. So let's talk about that. How could this happen in our country? There is evidence that this was the inevitable result of SNP policy. There is also evidence that prisons were treated as a form of testing ground for gender self-ID across society in hospitals, toilets, changing rooms. So the most vulnerable and voiceless women are told to believe that a male-bodied inmate in their prison is a woman. One female prison prisoner said this week that she was threatened with disciplinary action if she did not go along with this charade. Shocking and shameful. A prison officer told me about being ordered to address a male-bodied paedophile as she. He describes this as ridiculous. The SNP say this scandal has no bearing on their flawed gender recognition reform bill. But if this bill is enacted, it will make it even easier for rapists and other male sex offenders to be recognised as women and be treated accordingly. This would be enshrined in law, no matter the harm it would cause to women. Now, during the passage of the bill, I tried to stop sex offenders from being able to exploit self-ID. One of my amendments, jointly submitted with Michelle Thompson, would have prevented anyone charged with rape from being able to seek a gender recognition certificate. Right here, six weeks ago today, I said the primary purpose is to prevent an alleged rapist from declaring that he is female. I said that such a scenario might sound, and I quote, absurd, ludicrous and unimaginable, yet here we are, the unimaginable has actually happened. Presiding officer, it has taken the scandal of a double rapist in Conton Vale for this to ignite public awareness, public incredulity and public anger. Campaigners who have spent many long years warning and pleading with Nicola Sturgeon have been vindicated. It is now clear to everybody the real reason this rapist was removed was not because of the threat to female prisoners, but the threat to this SNP government. Yeah. Keith, Keith Brown defended the indefensible before being thrown under the bus by Nicola Sturgeon. How can we have any confidence in anything he says here today when it could be trashed in 24 hours? No wonder the SNP benches are so deathly silent. They know this is true. And I move the motion in my name. Thank you. Thank you. I call on George Adam to respond on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau. Thank you, President Officer. President Officer, as I mentioned at Parliamentary Bureau earlier today, of which Alexander Burnett, the Tory business manager, attended, the Cabinet Secretary for Justice, Keith Brown, will make today's statement as is the normal way of parliamentary business. Mr Brown will answer questions on the issue in the normal manner. Thank you. The first question is that Amendment 7734.1 in the name of Russell Finlay, which seeks to amend Business Motion 7734, in the name of George Adam, on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out changes to this week's business, be agreed. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we will move to a vote. There will be a short pause to allow members to access digital voting.